Hey girl, welcome to the Get Your Guide Coaching Podcast. My name is Anwar White, but you can just call me your own personal dating and relationship coach. Each week, you'll hear actionable advice, tips, and strategies that you can implement in your own love life. I'm talking about healing your heart, dating effectively, and understanding men so that you can, you guessed it, get your guy. Are you ready to level up your love life? All right, let's go. I never felt the way I do about anyone but you. Hello, my loves. I am so happy that you have decided to join me today. I have a very special guest, and she is going to knock your socks off. And I'm not trying to blow you up, Brig, but I think you're amazing. And I know that my listeners are going to think that you're amazing, too. So I have Brig Johnson here. She is Master Certified Life Coach, and she helps high-achieving women become unfuckwithable. Brig, girl, thank you so much for being here. And tell everybody what you do. (laughs) <laughs> I think that's it, right? I'm Brick Johnson. I've been mindset coach for high achieving black women. And I just work on their inner game. Like we work so much on our outer game and we have all the trappings of success, but yet we reach this point where what we've been doing hasn't been working. Yeah, And that's when it's time to bring in some other tools. And that's the inner game. Talk to me about why black women need to level up their inner game, or at least acknowledge it and understand what's going on there. Yeah, because like we have used all the tools that have been taught to us on how to like survive, how to get things, how to have things, how to be, but like we haven't been taught and given the skills on how to thrive, which is a different set of skills. Like we know how to hustle. We can out hustle. We can out maneuver out. I love us. I just... I think we're the best, right? Me too, girl. I think that's, I why that's why we work with us. That's why I think we work with Black women. Right, <laughs> right. Like, I want us to rest. I want us to have. I want us to be and not do all the time. And I actually think when we do that, we make more money and we impact the world so much more. I love that. Talk to me a little bit about this inner game. What are parts of this inner game that we have to master, girl, that we haven't been taught? Right. Like really understanding that at some point our thoughts really are key because most of my clients are on a hamster wheel, like success, success, and like just on a hamster wheel and they're tired, but they think, they think when they get off the hamster wheel, that means their success stops. And I'm like, no, that's when you like exponentially grow, but that's because you're leveraging your thoughts and the power of your thoughts and your mind. And I show them how to do that. One of the things I think the black women we get to do is to actually understand the cultural conditioning that we have received without our knowledge, because it's just in the ethos that we're inferior, that we have to work harder, that we're not beautiful inherently, like all of the things that we're taught that keep us on the treadmill, like even just the desire to be in the spotlight is shunned. Like, no, like, because that's not seen as safe, but yet in order to do the things that we want to do, It's the spotlight on us. Even like your clients, like put a profile up is to be in the spotlight. And we've been taught inherently that to shine a light on us, uh uh-uh, fly on the radar is what we've been told, right? So it's understanding those thoughts and how they show up and play out in our everyday lives, especially when we want to go to a next level. Yeah, I tell my clients all the time, you need to be self-centered in this love game. Like as like they say in Grey's Anatomy, you're the sun, right? So everything has to revolve around your thoughts, your energy, your feelings. And if it's not happening that way, there is a major problem. And your relationships are probably not going to serve you in the highest level, right? I think that, you know, we see our mothers and our grandmothers and they gave to their husbands, their children, the company, right? Or even our grandmothers or great grandmothers gave to the white families, right? The white children, right? So we saw this giving, giving, giving. And so we always, I think, at least for my clients, that pathology has kind of come down to a point where we have equated like, that's what love is to give to others, but not necessarily ourselves. And part of the work I do is really focus on no, it starts with you and then kind of exudes outward naturally and not necessarily like you having to kind of take away from you. What are your thoughts on that girl? Oh yeah. I love that. Like 
I I put a quote on my Instagram. Like the sun doesn't give a fuck. Can I cuss? I'm girl, sorry, you can do whatever the hell you want to do, girl. We are running things up in this <laughs> shit, girl. We are going to do whatever the hell we're go- we want to yeah. do. We are going to say whatever we want to say today. <laughs> it is our time, girl, as we yeah. know. <laughs> Good, good. Yeah, so the sun doesn't give a fuck if it outshines the moon. It just does its job. And because it does its job, we all benefit. If we stop worrying about outshining other people and like, oh, I'm being selfish, like, no. I like to tell people like, how is it the best thing for your employers, your family, your significant other, and for you that you put you first? Like we think that me putting me first actually hurts my employer. Uh Uh-uh, that's the best thing I can do for my employee because when I show up, I'm showing up at my best. I'm giving you my best. Yeah. And the best relationship we can have is the relationship with ourselves. Definitely. So for the listeners out there that haven't been able to do this right for their entire life how can they kind of reframe or change their perspective to make them number one right the gold medalist versus the bronze medalist are not even on the podium i think the quality of our life is the quality of our questions and so start by asking themselves and getting really curious about why do i think the way i think why is my worth tied to how much I give? Where did that come from? Like when we really start understanding, like, why can't I? Like, why am I not considered beautiful? Why is it that they get it and I don't? Like, just start asking why. And a lot of times you'll find out that it is patriarchal, old view, way of doing things that benefit everybody but yourself, but us as a Black women, especially. And when you understand that, then you're like, I don't want to keep thinking those same thoughts. Like, I don't want to continue to measure my success by those values. They weren't made for me in the first place. Yeah. So I think a lot of times what happens, especially for my smart and successful women out there, is that they actually shy away from even trying to even think about those things. So it's like, you know, blinders on, let me focus on my goals. I don't want to even think about all of the patriarchal bullshit, the all of that, like, I just want to get my money, right? I've gotten this education, right? I created this brand for myself for my entire Mm -hmm. life. I'm one of the few people in my family to actually quote unquote, make it right. I can't I don't have time. I don't have energy Mm -hmm. to even go into that realm. What do you tell them? How do you how can we convince them to go there, girl? I think we can't convince them. I think they have to convince themselves. I think when we get to a point when we're like, tired or we're not liking the results that we're creating, that's the point where we're like, wait a minute. And so your listeners know when it's time for them to like, what I'm doing ain't working. Because right, when we're on that path, and like, we're making it and we're got it and we got this and like, we're the only one in the family, but yet you go home and you're not feeling fulfilled. That's your key. That's your sign. You get the new car, you got the red bottoms, you got the new promotion, you got the money in your bank that you thought, or you're debt free now, you Dave Ramsey in it. Like (laughs) you understand all of that. And yet you're still like, I don't feel happy. There's no happiness. There's no contentment. Then that's when the student is ready, right? Mm. There's no convincing that we can do. They have to be ready. But when they're ready, oh, yes. (laughs) Right? Yeah. So I want everyone out there to just hear that, right? To be asking yourself these questions, but also to understand and really check in with yourself about whether, are you happy? Are you fulfilled? Right? Do you have joy? Right? If those answers are no, then we have to start really asking ourselves our questions of why. You mentioned something really interesting earlier about creating your results. Can you speak on that, girl? Because I think that individuals perhaps think that their hard work creates the results that they actually attain. It's when we understand how powerful our thoughts are, like our brain has a part of it called the reticular activating system. I'm not going to get real technical with y'all, so (laughs) don't worry. (laughs) But it has a part in the brain that... Oh, and just FYI, Brick has major medical experience. So she knows what she's talking about. (laughs) Yeah, right. Like when you ask your brain to find me this, even if it's like, I don't want this, what your brain sees is like, okay, it's going to give it to you. So you create your results by what you're concentrating on, what you're giving your energy on. We've all heard that quote, this is what you think about expand. So if you're thinking about your lack, 
if you're thinking about what you don't have, that expands because that's what you just told your brain to go find you. I call it playing fetch with your brain. It's like, go fetch me this because that's what you've thought of. And the brain is going to show it to you. So for your clients, there's no good black men. Okay, baby. Guess what your brain getting ready to show you? Everything. So you have basically created that reality and you miss like your brain actually does put blinders on because there's like 70,000 different thoughts that we have. And like, even us in this room right now, there's things that's going on that our brain is filtering out for us because we've said, I'm on a podcast. I want to pay attention to this, yeah. but there's people walking down my street that I'm not paying attention to. There's like, there's noises going on that I'm not paying attention to. Our brain filters out based on what we set the intention on. If I was saying what's outside, then my brain would go there and start looking and I would hear the people outside. It's the same thing with our life. How we think about things and how we language things is what we see, but it's also what creates our feelings and our emotions. And that determines what we do and how we show up. And those are our habits, which create our reality too. So it's like our brain does it two ways. It creates our feelings. So we create our habits and it also creates our vision of what we see the evidence to. I love that. That I was a long explanation. So I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, girl. I know everybody needs to hear this. Yeah. What are you talking about, girl? We people need to understand <laughs> that it really does start with your thoughts. Like, I think people are like, especially black women, right. actually, I don't even think that they're obviously I'm generalizing here, but conscious that like their thoughts are so powerful, right? I think that a lot of us, you know, black people, but black women go from the emotion, right? And I'm feeling a certain kind of way, right? And like from there, start navigating their lives, but realizing that the thought actually informs the emotion and the feeling, I think is such an aha moment for so many people out there that maybe have never even thought about it that way. Yes, it's totally. And like for your audience, it's like, how do they want to show up? How do they want to feel going through the dating process is determined how they feel is determined by their thoughts through it, not whether or not the guy swipes or says or texts back or anything. It's like, it's really the most empowering thing you can do is when you realize that you, you control how you feel always, not based on whether someone picks you, not pick you, whether you're home alone or you're out on a date, you control how you feel. And it's the most empowering thing that I think we give our clients is the power to control your thoughts, which gives you back the power in your life. I love that. And that is a really great segue into actually dating, right? That I have so many women that come to me or just I have conversations with and they're scared to even put themselves out there at all, even if it's in a small way, right? I think sometimes some of the things that I'm hearing, some of the thoughts that are going on in a lot of my clients' heads are, there are not a lot of great men out there. It's a pandemic. People are not trying to date. They're also saying like, I don't like online dating dating or I'm not ready, right? Even though they may be ready, like they haven't been ready for eight or 10 years now <laughs> or a variety right, of different right. thoughts that they're having around, right? Hindering them from putting themselves out there like that. I want to speak specifically about Black women. What do you think that is for Black women per se? And what I guess, advice would you have for helping Black women kind of overcome some of those thoughts that might be hindering them from their ultimate love goals, at least that first baby step? I like to talk about the think, feel, act cycle, like how we think determines how we feel, and then we act a certain way. So like, if you're thinking there's no good Black men out there, then you're going to feel discouraged. Well, when you feel discouraged, like all your listeners, like right now, think about it. If I'm feeling discouraged, how am I going to show up to the dating process? Right. As opposed to if I'm feeling hopeful or confident, how am I going to show up to the dating process? Just that right there, just the think, feel, act cycle shows you like, oh, if I'm feeling this way, that's how I'm going to show up. If you're feeling like, I'm not ready. How are you going to show up is non-committal and you're not going to be ready. You're going to act like a person who's not ready. But if you're thinking, you know what? I'm ready. I'm just going to decide 
who I am is enough right now, I'm ready. Then how do you feel? Just languaging it that way. What's the difference in your feeling? Like they can do that right now while we're talking. It's like, think of one way and then think of a different way to say it and see if you can produce a different emotion and think about how you would show up to the dating process through those two different types of emotions. Yeah. When I think of Black women dating specifically, and I guess just in general in life, as the certified life coach that you are, I think that there's a huge theme around worthiness and sufficiency, right? And I think as Mm. as we're talking about putting Mm -hmm. ourselves out there, that sometimes it can feel like I also don't want to put myself out there because I don't want the evidence of someone not wanting to be with me, evidence that I'm not potentially I'm using quotation marks, people, worthy or sufficient to love or be loved. What are your thoughts around that? I think the most important person that you need to feel worthy from is yourself, worthy and love from yourself. So first and foremost, and I'm sure you, I know you speak to this, is to accept that from yourself. But worthiness is one of those tricky things. We basically just get to decide I'm worthy. That's it. Because it's given at birth. It's like anything. It's not taken away from us. It's that way. We don't take away from it. We, it's not an addition, subtracting. It's not earned. You don't get demerited. It is like your right from birth. So at some point you just decide. I don't care how I feel. I don't care what the world tells me. I get to decide I'm worthy. It is as powerful as that. It is a decision. I may feel like, I don't know what, I may feel like whatever, but I am worthy. And you just practice that. Like, no, I'm going to say it. I'm worthy. That's it. And it's just that simple. It's like, there's no magic formula to it. I was worthy at birth. I'm worthy now. That's it. And you just continue to work on that. The sufficiency is we just get to feel like we are enough and you practice that. That's something I think we create. We create that through living our lives and like realizing I like to show people their sufficiency by showing them when they're outsourcing that to somebody else. Say like, more. what do you get? Again, those powerful questions. If the guy returned the phone call, what do I get to think? Mm-hmm. As opposed to he didn't return the phone call, right? What do I get to think about myself if he returned a phone call? Oh, he likes me. Okay. What do I do? What do I get to feel because he likes me? I get to feel worthy or confident or whatever. And my thing is like, okay, so you just outsource that to him. You can feel that way now. What can you think about yourself to get that same feeling? Right. As opposed to outsourcing it, whether or not he returns a call or not. Right. Yes. Exactly. It's exactly how I think about it too. And I think it's a boundary issue, right? What he does is on his island and what you do, how you feel, how you think is on your island. And if you go on over to his island, right, you're out of bounds. You doing something that is not where you're supposed to be. I'm in Canada right now. If I wanted to jump over to the U.S. without my passport, I'd be out of bounds. I think it's the same thing here as well. I wanted to talk a little bit more about worthy because I think specifically with Black women, there is something to be said for this level of perfection, right, that I think is unspoken, right, in a lot of different families, meaning Mm -hmm. like, I think we see our mothers and even our grandmothers, but more so our mothers, where they had to go through a different kind of society. And because of that, uh, that society has told them exactly what's wrong, quote unquote, what's wrong with them. And so oftentimes in their daughters, they demand perfection. You got to have your hair together at all times. You got to have every dress perfect, right? Those stockings, not one little run, right? Those Mary Jane shoes got to be together. Every Sunday for church, you got to be looking tip top. For school, you got to be tip top, right? You have to be perfect. You have to do this. You have to do that, right? Because of this void in some of our previous generations where one, they didn't have the same opportunities that we had, but also because there was this communication, this voice, this societal voice telling them that what they were doing was not ideal or not correct. What are your thoughts on that and how that potentially passes down to dating or in general for Black women? 
Yeah, I think as black women, especially, I think we shouldered a responsibility to disprove the inherent belief that black people are inherently inferior. So because we believe that we are responsible for disproving that stereotype or that belief or that ideology, then we hold ourselves to a, a higher standard. Because if we go out not representing our best, then somebody will say that's proof that we are not equal, right? right? So it's been passed on from generation to generation because it was like we had to prove our equality by how we behaved. So it's like not just get on an airplane, but get on an airplane with your Sunday best, not just go to the grocery store, but go to the grocery store and your kids in line, because if your kids did not misbehave and through the tantrum, that was more belief or that was more evidence. So what yeah. we tried to do was manage other people's opinions of us by overperforming, right? Now we still do that as high achieving women. We still try to manage other people's thoughts about us by yes. overperforming. It hadn't worked in 400 years. It is not going to work now. We can stop that. Like we can stop overperforming worthiness and trying to be the best of the best. We don't have anything to prove. It was never ours to disprove in the first place because it is a myth. We didn't ever have to accept that in the first place, but we did. Our ancestors took that on, but that's something we don't have to continue doing. Yeah, I love that. And it's the same with dating as well, right? A black woman will, and obviously I'm generalizing here, but will become performative in a lot of different ways because they're trying to prove I'm worthy of love, right? I got my stuff together, right? You don't have to. And I always say that impressive doesn't equal connection, right? That you being Miss Perfect Miss Pollyanna, Miss I don't know what, that's not going to actually create connection. It's this vulnerability. It's this ability to be your 100% self, authenticity, being genuine, right? The good, bad, and also the ugly. They got to see your ugly to fall in love with all parts of you, right? <laughs> so I love that you mentioned this performative right. aspect that happens in life, especially at work. I tell my clients all the time, the way that you showing up at work is not the same way that you talk to your family and friends, girl. Let's keep it real. And you want to go on these first dates mm -hmm. acting mm -hmm. like you're at work and doing an interview instead of talking to these people like they're your family and your best friend. They can't fall in love with you 100%. They fall in love with that other girl that shows up, right? That character at, right. at work. Well, it's like, it's not even that, but it's like, they're not loving. Cause if you were loving yourself, you wouldn't have the character on in the first place. Like I love me, this part of me, like, I don't have to show up any other way. I want you to know me. I love me. So of course you love me, right? Like I don't, yes. there is no mask for me to put on because I just get to be me. That's part of actually a lot of my work with my clients. And I'm pretty sure it's a lot of your work as well in terms of just showing up 100% yourself at all times and being confident, secure, and also feel safe with that as well, right? Being 100% yourself, which yes. I think is very hard for a lot of people to do, but specifically Black women. Can you talk a little bit about that level of safety that I think is really important and just kind of sitting into yourself? Oh, I love that. I love that you even said that. That is like, we have been told like our security and our safety is elsewhere. And we have been in environments where we don't feel safe. And so whenever we feel threatened, for many of us, it's like a trauma response to yes. like not feeling safe. It's a learned behavior. So as we get older, it's like, don't shine, don't put yourself out there. All of it goes back to like, I don't feel safe but we're expecting other people to make us safe or situations to make us safe or job stability to make us safe, which is no such thing, Correct. right? When it comes down to it, it is we become our own refuge. And I'm sure that's what you teach your clients. It's for sure what I teach my clients. It's how you become your own own refuge. Like you create your own safety, just like happiness is an inside job. Safety and security is an inside job. And that's when we move from surviving to thriving. Yes. Like how long are we going to guard the gates? Can we go walk on the property? Like we've been guarding the gate for a long time. Yes. I want to go see what I got. <laughs> all those walls, girl, all those walls. Yeah. Yes. Open those gates. I love that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. One of the things that I think is 
really important as well that I wanted to talk to you about was this notion of finding your voice, especially as a Black woman in the world. I think a lot of times, and this is both Black women and Black men, that when we grow up, we're supposed to be seen and not heard, right? And so I think that that actually translates to our greater adult life, as well, especially in our romantic life. So Talk to me about your experience around that and also what you see in your clients and, and how that kind of manifests itself. I think a lot of times, I think this is that stereotype of the angry black woman. And that's a whole nother podcast right there, right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> but it's like, we don't want to be seen as angry or emasculating. So therefore, we tend to be more people pleasers and we don't say what we want to say because it's either I want him to like me, so I'm going to show up this way. Or I really do feel this way, but if I do, he's going to think I am an angry black woman and like I'm this powerful person. So like we're fighting that stereotype. And so it's like we feel as if we're boxed in and the only way out is just to be yourself. Like literally, that's the only way out is to like have your own back. Like, do I really want the guy that I can't say I disagree with? That's the goes back to the power of the questions. It's like we're so busy trying to get chosen that we forget. Do I even want him? Right. Like that's right. the most important one. Right. Like if I got to show up and put a mask on and I can't say, baby, you took the wrong turn without there you go. Then maybe he's not the one I choose. Forget him choosing me. Right. Women, you get to choose again. Like I was saying before, you are the son. It's all about you. I truly believe and this is what I tell all of my clients that you lead the relationship. You lead it based on being able to accept and reject what is happening around you. And you get to speak on that, right? You get to say yes or no, right? This is why I was asking about voice and how we manage our minds around our voice, right? Because as you were saying earlier about this, always having to disprove, disprove, which means that I can't express my emotions, right? I can't speak to something that is bothering yes. me. And then I keep it deep, deep down inside. And then when it gets to a point where I can't handle it anymore, I get angry and I blow up right? Because I have years and years of anger yeah. that I've been trying to temper, right? And I just can't do it anymore. So yes, like the voice is think, right. so important. And one of the major parts of the work that I do is being able to have women find their genuine, authentic voices, not the professional one at work, right? Where we're talking about touching base mm -hmm. and circling back around and all of that finding your true voice and also finding your voice to express your true emotions, right? And being able to do that and communicate in a way where your message is heard and not the emotion. Because I think that sometimes the message gets lost mm -hmm. when we are expressing it in an overly emotional way where especially a man will just want to appease the emotion without even listening to the message. And so being able to also not just understand what your voice is, but how to use it effectively in your relationships is super important. What are your thoughts on kind yeah, of voice yeah. and how that relates to your mind, right? And managing that. Sometimes we're so afraid to be judged as like, if I say this or all of those different stops, like he may think this, or I can't like, I'm going to say it wrong, or I'm going to say this emotionally, like in a way, because we know how pendulums are. Like if we hadn't said anything and now we're moving towards, you know, our clients do like when we start moving them towards the other one, sometimes they overcorrect, right? That's right. That's right. And like the pendulum swings the other way, right? And to allow for that, like the mind work is to allow allow for the issues of the process and like to be able to be like, yeah, I kind of overreacted on that one. I'm sorry. That doesn't mean like, stop, don't do it. That means like, okay, I'm learning from this and give yes. yourself grace. Like I'm learning a new process and be willing to fail at it or to look bad at it or for it to look messy and still be your authentic self. That could be the sexiest thing a man could see is like, <laughs> 
wow. <laughs> like you owned it. Like, yeah, babe, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I kind of overreacted on that one. I'm, I'm working on that. Like just being able to hold space for yourself, no matter where you are in a process, even if you overswing. Yeah. Like, yeah. I kind of overswing. So that's the thought work of it. Like I'm willing to do the work. The work is messy. It doesn't, it's not supposed to be this beautiful, straight up going line. It's full of it's ups and downs and turns and roadblocks yes. and bends. Yes. And just put your seatbelt on and go. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And to your point, right? If things are going out of control or there's a reaction or whatever it may be, right? Being able to own it, like you said, and also not just own the fact that it was out of control, but also just own the emotion, right? That that's how I was feeling at the time, right? And that's why I did what I did. I think is also so freeing and just being able to just own all parts of yourself. I think that that's relatable, right? Like I was saying before, nobody can relate to a Pollyanna. No one can relate to Miss Nice Girl who never says anything, who never does anything out of pocket because ultimately you don't know where that person stands, how they feel about certain things or think about certain things, right? I also work with a lot of quote unquote nice girls who don't speak up, who <laughs> go with the right. flow, right? Because they are trying to disprove that angry Black woman thing that you were talking about that. Mm -hmm label. So yeah, that's so crazy. Okay, I want to switch gears a little bit because I think that sometimes what happens too is that when women get into a relationship, most of my clients are in relationships within three to six months of working with me, they feel like, oh, everything's good, right? It's happily ever after. I don't have to do all of this work that I was doing before. Talk to me about how we should be thinking or managing our minds once we actually get into a relationship that's when the work begins because it's like yes. for yes. it's it's you managing your mind it's like now we now we got something to work on right it's like that's where we really get to understand like what he does what he says doesn't create the emotions inside of me like the relationship doesn't create the emotions inside of me that's still my job i'm still responsible for that even how we make love. It's like, if you just lay there in the bed and like, you're responsible here, make me happy. Mm -mm. Like go to work, dude, uh -uh. you do it. None of no. That. Right. But we do that in relationships. Like once we get into relationship, it's like, sometimes we're like, here, call me, text me, make me feel good. Like yes. make me feel like I'm special. Right. As opposed to that's my job. Like if I go to the bedroom already, like I'm sexy, I'm good. I'm here to enjoy myself and you just get the benefits of it. Right. You participating. We're it's a sharing. much different yeah. experience. It's more enjoyable. Yeah, it's enjoyable for him and for me. It's the same thing with our dating. I'm like, I want to go out. How about you? You want to go out? You take responsibility for what you want and not like he's supposed to read my mind. No. Or like he's supposed to make me happy. No. All of those are your job. Like, and you just, you just stand up for yourself and take your power back for that. Yeah, I love that. I agree with you 100%, right? And I tell my clients all the time, like, girl, we were playing around. Now that you're in a relationship, we got a lot of work to do, especially that first month. That first month is like one of the most insecure months that you're probably going to have because in your mind, you're still kind of operating as a single woman, right? Your actual single womanhood hasn't transitioned into partnership and relationship. So you're still in your mindset of, am I worthy of this relationship? Do you still like me? And I think it's human nature because men are feeling the exact same way but as it relates to black women right we have to also prove that you should like me that i'm worthy of this right i'm going to fall in line with what you want to say and what you want to do and maybe to a detriment right that's what i see a lot as well that i'm just happy to be in a relationship so i'm just gonna like not buck anything i'm just kind of kind of stay on this boat and make sure that i'm just on that ride right instead of actually steering it that you're the captain, right? And you get to say, mm, I want to do things this way. Like you were saying, right? About going out. Mm, no, mm -hmm. I want us to communicate this way. I want us to date this way and go out this way, right? All of those things. So I'm just so happy that you're thinking the same way that I'm thinking and that it is true. Like it's actually more intense. And it, I think it takes much more fortitude in terms of managing your mind when you're in a relationship, because at that point you've given this person a different level of trust. And so the emotions, right? And the thoughts actually intensify, right? The roller coaster that we were talking about actually is much steeper and much like deeper in its declines than before. 
so important to be able to keep your head. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. I just think as women in general, like we are taught and, and conditioned and socialized to believe that we are responsible for how people think and feel about us. And that shows up so much in romantic relationships, like thinks and feels about us is our responsibility. And so we're always performing because of that. So when we get the man, now it's like, oh, we got to keep him. So now it's, we got to perform because how he feels about the relationship is my job. And my worth, my value as a woman is tied up to whether or not I have a man, which is another patriarchal view, right? And it never was. But yet, if he doesn't like me, it's because I did something wrong. No, like he has a preference. That's it. That's literally it. It has nothing to do with you. It's his thoughts. Again, I love the island. Now you're over there on his island because whether or not he likes you or not, that's his island. And if y'all both like each other, now we good. Right. I'm not responsible for his emotions and his feelings. So I can stop trying to like be a certain way so that he can feel a certain way. I just get to be me, yeah, which is so much more freeing. And if he likes it, cool. And if he doesn't, cool. And also so much more fun, (laughs) right? Yes, so much more fun because I just get to be myself. Right, exactly. And there's nothing better than a man knowing you, knowing your dirty draws, all of it, and like just loving you the way you are. That is like, that's love, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it. Awesome. Well, Brig, thank you so much for talking to us about really how to manage our minds in life and in dating and love. I think this is going to be so helpful for so many women out there. And I know that they've seen and heard themselves today and some of the thoughts that we have talked about. So for any of the listeners out there that want to connect with you more about really how to manage their minds in their entire life, right? How can they connect with you? For sure. I have a monthly masterclass that I offer for my listeners. I have a podcast too. It's called Breakthrough with Brig. And I offer a free masterclass that they can go to my website and sign up, brickjohnson.com. And that way you can just ask any questions, get coached or whatever. Instagram, follow me on Instagram, Johnson Brig. Yes. I love it. And we'll have all of those links in the show notes for you all to connect with her. You will not regret it. She is going to change your life. Brig, Thank you so much. I am so happy that you are here and we had this conversation. It was so much fun. Just enjoyed it. And I hope your listeners got a chance to take out some little candy. If you can just take one nugget out of this, I'm I'm happy for it. That's right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brig. Talk to you soon. Hey girl. Thank you so much for listening to the Get Your Guy Coaching Podcast. If you like this episode and want to talk with me personally, please book a free consultation at www.getyourguycoaching.com slash apply or subscribe and leave me a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Talk soon. Talk soon.